This is your San Francisco 49ers update. Brian Professor B. Davis and this 49ers flashback as we take a look back at the 49ers Super Bowl 30-year anniversary from 1994. The 49ers were in week number six were taking on the Detroit Lions trying to bounce back from an ugly embarrassment 40-8 to loss to the Philadelphia Eagles in week five. The loss dropped the 49ers to 3-2. and two. Steve Young Probably many people felt in that game, George Seifert taking Steve Young out of the game in the early mid part of the fourth quarter when you remember he threw his tirade on the sideline as he um, was livid on the sideline. And that was a a week that all 49er fans will never forget because George Seifert, Niner fans called on talk shows on the radio locally on the drive time wanted George Seifert fired and put Seifert on the hot seat immediately. In the contest, it was ugly. The Eagles dominated San Francisco, held the 49 uh, The Eagles had outgained the 49ers 437 total yards. They helped the Niners to only 189 total yards in total offense. It was the worst regular season defeat for the 49ers in, since 1980 when they were just ambushed by the Dallas Cowboys at Texas Stadium, 59-14. to This was also the second worst loss by an eventual Super Bowl champion in NFL history. Niners going into Week 6 now with a lot of uncertainty at 3-2, and two, taking on the defending NFC Central Division champion Detroit Lions at the Pontiac Silverdome in Michigan, in Pontiac, Michigan. Before we go to that, let's hear some of the thoughts uh, or some of the highlights of um, from or the players' um, thoughts of that ugly loss to the Philadelphia Eagles. Sometimes you need a wake up call, and I don't think it was a wake up call for just Steve or just Drew, but it was a wake up call for the whole team. So I think we kind of felt like we could just roll out there, go on the field, roll out our helmets, and say, hey, we're the 49ers, go, you know, go take a back seat. But then that right there made us realize that we have to work for everything that we get. And I think when we hit the Philadelphia game, got embarrassed and humiliated. We looked around and said, no, we know this isn't us. We know whatever we're going to be, this isn't what we are. Then when we lost to Philly, I was kind of glad because then I could see, well, let's see what type of team we're going to be. Are we going to bounce back to this or are we going to flush this uh, season down the toilet? Got to be a good one today. Got to turn this down. was down and San Francisco was nearly out of business as the Lions grabbed a 14 to nothing lead. Down the line, Barry Sanders. Better step to the outside. Gets the touchdown. Barry, Barry Sanders. Oh. With the fate of the season hanging by a thread, the 49er defense dug in, sparking the pivotal comeback of 1994. That was uh, some of the thoughts of, from the Niner veteran players, Ricky Waters and Steve Young. Uh, we we, uh, at, we um, Breaking down that loss to the Philadelphia Eagles, many people 
and yours truly believe for all Naya fans from the Bay Area and beyond was no doubt was the low point of the season. But the Niners rose like from rose like Lazarus and were able to bounce back with the and then many people consider a must win game. Niners end up winning this game twenty seven to twenty one. They at one point uh they trailed seven to nothing. They trailed well at one point the uh, they trailed fourteen to nothing and the Niners jumped on the Lions after that, from that point forward, they would score 27 unanswered points. They would come out of it with a big 27 to 21 victory. And they, they after, after uh, Scott Mitchell cooked up with Lions wide receiver Brett Perryman for a touchdown on a nine yard score f- or from Barry Sanders. Future Hall of Famer, not young, of course, Steve Young was knocked out on a play with a pinched nerve of his leg, and he came back and rallied. And that was many people thought was the turning point of the season. That was the that was the turning point of the season. And looking at the games, it was Brett Perriman on a 33-yard touchdown pass from Scott Mitchell. They were up seven to nothing. Barry Sanders had a nine-yard rush. It was fourteen nothing. William Floyd scored on a touchdown. That was um, 14 to 7. Then Ricky Warris had a touchdown, four yard run, game tied at 14 14. Then in the third quarter, William Floyd had a touchdown that made it 21 14. Fourth quarter, Nate Singleton on a Steve Young hooked up with Nate Singleton, a five yard touchdown. They missed the extra point, made it 27 to 14. Then Herman Moore's touchdown late in the fourth period from Scott Mitchell made it 27 to 21. The top. Um, N- n- the numbers, the top, uh, Steve Young was 19 to 25, 152 yards, a touchdown. Scott Mitchell, 18 out of 27, threw for 246 yards, two touchdowns. He threw an interception. Merton Hanks had an interception in that game. Detroit Lions had two turnovers. The Niners had none. And that was a big win for the, for the Niners. I mean, the comeback from, you know, the comeback a team win after that ugly, horrible embarrassment at home to the Philadelphia Eagles. The Niners, with that win, improved their record to 4-2. So, this game in 1994 was weak. It was from October 9th, 1994. This was a kickoff time, 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, 1 o'clock Eastern on the Eastern Time Zone. The attendance was 77,340. The referee was Gary Austin. Jerry Austin. This game was televised on Fox Sports. Play-by-play was Dick Stockton along with Matt Millen, Kevin Frazier, the sideline reporter. So that was a big win for the 49ers. That pretty much was the turning point of their season. Niners improved to 4-2 and two of the young season after that embarrassment while the Detroit Lions fall to two and four, and boy, I can't imagine the hot seat is starting to burn up for for their, for Wayne Fonts in Motown, who was beginning his sixth full season as Detroit Lions head coach. Let's take a look around the NFL from week number six. It was the Green Bay Packers uh, over the Rams, twenty four fourteen. By the way, the NFL was celebrating in 1994, 30 years ago, was celebrating its 75th anniversary. So that meant it was another anniversary weekend. They were throwing, going with the throwback uniforms in week number six. It was the uh, Packers over the Rams, 24 to 17, as Brett Favre threw for 222 yards in a touchdown. Chris Miller threw for two touchdown passes, a losing effort. With the loss, the Rams fall to two and four. The Packers improve the three and three. It was the Chicago Bears over the New Orleans Saints, seventeen to seven, and and then it was uh, Lawrence Tillman led the way for the Bears, rushing twenty three carries, a hundred yards, and a touchdown. The Bears proved the four and two. The Saints dropped to two and four. The Atlanta Falcons. With a 34 to 13 win over the Tampa Bay Bucks down at the Georgia Dome, Jeff George threw for 269 yards, two interceptions, and then 
the uh, Craig Ironhead Hayward rushed for 87 two touchdowns. That means the Falcons approved their record of 4-2. and two. They now, them and the 49ers, after the first six weeks, are now in a virtual tie for first place. When we do our next Niners radio flashback from 1994, uh, we will we'll recap the Niners win over the Atlanta Falcons and the return of Deion Primetime Sanders to the Georgia Dome down in the South. So 34-13, Falcons over the Buccaneers. Jets over the Colts, 16-6. Then it was the four-time defending AFC champion Buffalo Bills with a 21-11 win over the Dolphins as Jim or actually it was Thurman Thomas rushed for 125 yards and two touchdowns. Andre Reid, seven catches for 82 yards. Both the Dolphins and Bills, Dolphins go to four, fall to four and two. Bills go to improve the four and two. Both teams are tied for first place in the AFC East as the Buffalo Bills continue their mastery over their longtime rival, Dan Marino and the Miami Dolphins, in week six. The two time defending Super Bowl champion, Dallas Cowboys, the beat goes on. They bounce back 38 to three over the Cardinals down at Texas Stadium as. Michael Irvin, eight catches for 136 yards and a touchdown. Colts, or as I say, the Cowboys improved the 4-1. and one. The Cardinals dropped the 1-4. and four. In an AFC divisional battle, the Broncos pick up their first win with a 16-9 win over the Seahawks up at the Kingdom as Shannon Sharp led the way with seven catches for 87, led the Seahawks six catches for 90 yards. Broncos improved the 1-4, and four. Seahawks improved fall the three and three the game of the day it was the Kansas City Chiefs Joe Montana now the Chiefs uniform taking on the undefeated San Diego Chargers the soon-to-be AFC champion San Diego Chargers the Chargers with a 20 to 6 win over the the Kansas City Chiefs up in in San Diego as Joe Montana threw for 310 yards when he threw an interception. Stan Humphreys uh, threw a touchdown pass while throwing for 171 yards. Natron Mean, they had 19 carries, a, a buck 25 and a touchdown. Marcus Allen, nine catches for 83 yards in receptions. So with the win, with the win, the Chargers improved their record to 5 and 0. Oh, while the Chiefs drop the three and two, the Chargers now have a commanding two-game lead in first place in the AFC West. They are two up on on the uh, Chiefs, and then the Raiders with a a rare victory up in Foxborough, defeating Bill Parcells, Drew Bledsoe, and the uh, and the Patriots twenty-one seventeen. Jeff Hostetler threw for two hundred fifty yards, but he threw three interceptions. He did throw a touchdown. Drew Bledsoe. Threw for 321 yards and two touchdowns in a losing effort, but he threw three interceptions. And then Harvey Williams, 17, rushed for 65 yards. And then Big and Big Ben Colts, nine catches for 123 yards in a losing effort for the New England Patriots. The Raiders improved the two and three, while the Patriots fought 500 at three and three. And then. It was the Philadelphia Eagles <coughs> after that annihilating beat down to the 49ers out at, at the stick. At, they go on to beat the Washington Redskins 21 to 17. Randall Cunningham threw for 261 yards, two interceptions in one touchdown. And then Charlie Gardner, 28 carries, 122 yards. And so with the win, the Eagles improved the four and one. The Redskins dropped the one and five. And then on Monday Night Football, it was the Minnesota Vikings over the New York Giants by four. That's uh, 27 to 10. Warren Moon threw for 299 yards. He threw a touchdown. And then Terry Allen rushed for 75 yards and a touchdown. And the Vikings defense shut down Rodney Hampton, 13 carries for 27 yards. Quadri Ishmael led the way for the Vikings, seven catches for a 17 yards 
of the night. The Vikings improved to four and two. This was a rematch of the NFC Wild Card playoff from the in, back in January of '94, while the New York Giants fall to three and two. Well, that's going to do it for our segment, our 49ers radio flashback. We take we're looking back at the time from October 9th, 1994. Just a reminder, the 49ers enjoying their mini bye week after a win over the Seattle Seahawks. They're back in it. One week from today, they'll take on the Kansas City Chiefs. Then two weeks from tonight, they'll play the primetime game against the Dallas Cowboys for Sunday Night Football. Next week, Niners and Chiefs, 125, the late window on Fox Sports. And then it will be Kevin Burkhart, Tom Brady with the call. And then two weeks from tonight, Niners and the Cowboys on the, under the lights for Sunday Night Football on NBC Sports. Mike Tirico, Chris Collins with the, with the call. Greg Papa, Tim Ryan on the Niners Radio Network presented by U.S. Bank. For the latest news on 49ers news and so much more, go to 49ers.com. For now, I'm Brian Professor B. Davis. Thank you for watching 49ers Flashback, a salute to the 30-year anniversary of the 1994 Super Bowl 40 champion 49ers. Brian Professor B. Davis for Niners Radio 49.